Hi there, I'm Sarah Arvizo. I'm the director of media relations at Stagwell. I'm joined by actor, poet, and NFT creative David Bianchi. Welcome, David. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Just have a few questions for you. We're here at Cannes, the celebration of creativity. Um, so, David, I know you did something really unique in spoken word. Can you explain why Cannes was the stage for that? Yeah, uh, I was uh, I was invited here by an organization called Global Brain, and they focus on climate initiatives. And I was invited here to perform a spoken word piece called the Everything Change, which is essentially the catchphrase of what they stand for in an organization called the New Zero World. So I had the the, the incredible opportunity to perform a, a five minute, very sort of inspirational and uplifting spoken word performance on the main Debussy stage. Um, discussing how we can be better as a community to combat climate change. That's incredible. And thank you. And to do it at Can Lion, uh, I would normally be at NFT NYC, which is actually happening right now. Sure. But you know, this is the hub for creativity. This is the hub for advertisers and brands and marketing. And so knowing that I will be able to be directly in, t in touch with those people and inspire those people, um, I knew that this felt like where it needed to be and where it needed to take place. Absolutely, it's an incredible platform. So social conscious is a big part of your work. How do you bridge that on scale? <laughs> yeah, I mean, social consciousness isn't always popular, and it isn't always uh, right. it isn't always popular. It isn't always as well funded. But um, you know, I started I created an art genre called spinema, spinning cinema through spoken word. Oh wow! Right. So I'm the only person in the world that's producing these high concept theatrical level films okay. that are told entirely in spoken word poetry that are socially conscious. So I say all that because I minted the first ever award-winning spoken word film as an NFT in March of 2021. Wow. And that got bought by the team that bought the $69 million Beeple at Christie's, yep. got picked up by Forbes, the story, my story got picked up by Forbes, and I donated all those proceeds to the George Floyd Memorial Foundation. It's and so philanthropy has been a big part of my story. And so as a result of that, it's really created a big upward trajectory. And if it weren't for the blockchain and if it weren't for NFTs, this, this message that we just shared about would not even be happening because my popularity and my rise through spoken word poetry and social consciousness has been a direct result of NFTs. Because I've been making these films for 17 years. But then come the blockchain, mm -hmm. you've got this incredible community of people that are tech savvy, yep. sophisticated, well-to-do, influential, and hungry for high art. And everybody wants to be on the right side of history. And so as a result of all that alchemy, <laughs> Here we are today. Here we are today. It all came together. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, on the note of NFTs, they've been a launch pad for you. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, and I, NFTs for me not only have given me the liberation to be a self-sustaining artist, um, it's given me the opportunity to really um, expand and be expansive when it comes to social conscious stories. So whether I'm talking about injustice or racism or overpopulated prisons or climate issues, um, you know, whatever it is that I choose to discuss in my art, it's become part of my brand. So there's an expectation now. Uh, and I've become probably the leading socially conscious artist in NFTs. And what's so powerful about it is for the first time in human history, artists are able to reap secondary sales on the sale of their art. Right. So to me, this is the most important renaissance going all the way back to painting on cave walls. Mm -hmm. right? This has never happened in human history. Even right. the masters got their primary sale and that was it. Right. They never saw a secondary chain. Right? Exactly. And so as a result of that and the equity that you receive, it allows you to remove all notions of scarcity, which opens up vessels for bigger creativity. Absolutely. And so how do you think they're going to change the future, you know, sort of beyond the work that you're doing? Like, do you, can you talk a little bit about how you view NFTs in other areas of, in other industries, other areas of the world? Sure, absolutely. I mean, to break it down to brass tacks, an NFT, a non-fungible token, is basically metadata that's, that's locked on the blockchain. That's all that it is. Mm -hmm. So when we look at it from an informational perspective, especially here at Kent Lion, like, yes, it's, we, we lead with creativity, but behind that creativity is information, data, and analytics. Right? Right, exactly. I mean, that is really the base of everything that's happening here. So if we know that to be true, and we know that it's basically metadata that's married on the blockchain, and it's an open ledger that can't be manipulated, broken, or destroyed, and it's transparent at a global level at any moment in time, it is a beautiful breeding bed for data. So we're talking about VIN numbers, health records, uh, plaintiff and defendant records, your blood type, uh, you know, your vehicle history. It can go on and on at infinitum, right? Right. You know, Fine art made NFTs sexy, 
but at a technological level, there are far more utilities above and beyond that. And I also think for IRL activation, so you know, token gated concerts are already happening, for example, like if you want to go on a yacht, you can't, you can't enter that yacht unless you own the NFT from this particular community, which is your access that can be authenticated. If we look at like brands, like luxury brands, like say Diageo, for example, or if we look at Louis Vuitton, if we look at like Chanel, for example, one of the biggest problems that they have is piracy. Mm -hmm. So what if this, for example, were a Levi's jacket and it had a chip inside of it that was minuscule mm -hmm. that you can then scan and then verify the authenticity of this jacket on the blockchain? Right? Right. So now there's 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 no there's no making it up. Yeah. Right? Or you can have, say for example, a luxury pass to let's just say Audemars. Just to pick a, a choice, right? Sure. And let's say it has five watches on it. I buy the NFT, I owe that NFT. And I've redeemed one of those watches. And I'm like, okay, cool. Now I'm gonna sell this at a higher value because maybe the asset has ascended, mm -hmm. right? Okay, I'm not gonna sell it to you. Right. Well, now you have four watches to redeem, mm -hmm. potentially. Yep. Now it's also an asset class, so it can be passed on to beneficiaries. So if you're looking at art, art will ascend in value. I can pass on my board ape to my nephew right. if I choose to. Exactly. I can pass on a David Bianchi piece of fine art sure. if I choose to. And so there's so many different components to NFTs that I think a lot of people at Can Lion don't quite understand. Mm -hmm. And with all due respect, including yourself. So I wanted to be here to evangelize that, and that's why I didn't go to NFT NYC, because there I'm speaking to an echo chamber. Right. Whereas here, I get to educate people on the values of what we can do and how we can change the world. You know, not just through the technology, but through art that has social impact and donating money to, phil to, to philanthropic efforts, 501c3s, and so on and so forth. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for sharing that with us. <laughs> Thanks for being here. And we're here in the Stagwell Content Studio at the Can Speakers Lounge. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>